Hi, welcome to Max 7 tutorial number 41, Jitter Effects, Modulating Basic Effects. So I'm just going to start off with a new window as I, I like to do when I can. And um, come on, new window. Oh, I'm in the wrong program. Here we are. Now we're back in Max. And we hit Command N, and there's the window, and we maximize the window, and we get an inspector. Okay, now we're ready to talk. So, um, let's just uh, do it again. Let's get a video of something. Do we like dishes? Do we like... We like dishes. They're colorful. Let's try some dishes here. So, we now have a playlist. We talked about this last time. This is the new way to do things in Max 7. And what we're going to do today is run this movie through a basic effect out to a patcher window. So, let's just put a uh type of j and then pw and you should have a patcher window there it is and what we're going to do is also type a j and then b r c o s a burkosa so um Hey, I'm going to just zoom a little bit so it's not so hard for you to see. So, you know, um, just for um, comparison's sake, I'm going to just double this one and say this one comes directly out of here. So we have something to sort of understand what we're not doing. And then this one will have the Burkosa on it. Burkosa. Brightness, contrast, saturation. So well named. And this one will have the uh, video coming through the brightness, contrast, and saturation uh, tool in Jitter. So let's lock our patcher and take a look here. And we have two videos playing of the dishes. And that is just wonderful. Oops, forgot to click our little thingy there. So they just go around and around and around. Okay, so how do we modulate an effect? There's a number of ways to do it. The old school way, unlocking our patcher, is to look at the, is to look at the inspector and figure out what um, what you can uh, uh, prepend the brightness, contrast, or saturation with, and then send it a number. So we can do it that way, or we can use the old attribute object, or a truey, as some people insist on saying, and we can do it that way. So just uh, very quickly, um, let's, uh, re now remember that in Jitter, generally you're talking about numbers between 0, 0.0 and 1.0. And I say the point zeros because you want to remember that they should be floating point numbers. So let's just see what it does. Let's, um, make a new object called the prepend object, one of our most useful objects ever, and just say, uh, saturation. And then we will put a floating point number, type an F, above this and see how that works. So here we have a 0 0.4 saturation, and you can see it just sucked the color right out of it. And now we'll head on up to a 1. At 1, it should look perfectly normal. And it does. And then, of course, we can go higher, and it looks like old VHS tape all of a sudden. No, it doesn't like it. It's slowing things down. But look at that stuff, just burning out with color. So, obviously, we can do the uh, same things for, um, for 
brightness and contrast as we're doing here. Um, the other way to go about this, as I said, is to use an attribute object. Um, and whoops, you have to unlock your patcher. Type an N, A T T R, and you got it. It says nothing because it's not hooked to anything. It doesn't know what to do. But now it's hooked to the Burkos object, and it knows what to do. It, you can select your brightness, your contrast, your saturation, and some other things that are more uh, difficult to work with. But let's just say, what did we have here? Saturation. So if we click on saturation, it immediately senses that the Burkosa object was at 4.5. So we can actually turn that down now, or we could just, uh, there, to, there, that's only twice as saturated as it needs to be. And we'll just go back to regular. Whoops. Hey, there we go. Uh, here's negative saturation. And I think you might notice that it turns the colors to exactly the opposite of what they are. Now, it's not the same as inverting it. Light things are still light and dark things are still dark, but the colors are backwards. Nice to look at. I'm glad, glad we had that moment. So there's positive one, and now they're the same again. So we can click down here too and uh, change our contrast and we can make the contrast go up so it's really which is sort of like sort of like um saturation but it's more alpha oriented and then here's zero uh contrast which means that the darks and the lights are all the same and here's the negative again and we start getting negative contrast Now in this case, I think you'll notice that the shadows coming by on here, which are dark, are light on here. So this changes the um, alpha channel to negative, and saturation um, probably changes all the color channels to uh, uh, positive or negative. So uh, great. Well. We are now modulating the effect. That's what it's called. This is the effect, but how much you do it is called the modulation. And, you know, how can we um, affect this? Well, obviously, the one easy way would be to uh, put a slider here. Um, unlock this. New slider. Wish I would have saved my slider from the last tutorial. Actually, I did, but just to remind you of, uh, you know, how it works, um, I will go over it again. So we have the prepend there. We have a nice uh, little number of 4.5. And what we want to do is change the slider. I like fat sliders myself because my fingers are so fat. Um, a nice fat slider, and what we want is to go down here, and we want to float the output. You can see float output down near the bottom here. We want it to be um, absolute, that's fine. We only want the range to go from 0 to 1, so I'm going to... Actually, no, we don't. Let's say 5, because we want to be able to just blow things right out of the water. 5.0 doesn't have to just be one, it can be more. So now that our um, slider is set correctly, um, we can change the indicator color too, which I always like doing. There we go. And um, back here we lock our patcher, and now we can... Oops, so we're changing the saturation now. We're going up in the saturation, but of course the contrast is still at Whoops. There. Contrast normal, saturation high. Right? So that's great. So we can make three of these and, uh, and um, control them that way. Or we could put three attribute objects here and control them that way. I personally 
favor the prepend objects because then you can make a nice interface for yourself. So just with uh, with that much said, we'll just um, select them all, option click on them, and connect them up to old Burkosa over here. And, oh, sorry, and then we have to change these. So let's leave this one as saturation and so that we have them in the right order. Uh, this one can be brightness, B-R-I-G-H-T-N-E-S-S, -S. doink. This one can be contrast. And that one will be saturation. And um, there is one thing to consider here, though, that which is our brightness now goes up to like five times bright, which is a lot. That's pretty darn bright. And it only goes down to zero, which is black. So we probably would want to reset these to something more usable, like we'll give them a range of... Uh, Let's just say 6, 6.0, and the output minimum will set to negative uh, 3.0. We've floated the output, the multiplier is 1, good, good. And uh, let's see how that works, just so we can... Um, so now, 0 is in the... Actually, we really wanted one in the middle. We probably should have made it five, but that's okay. Such, so that's very, very bright, gets very dark at zero, and continues getting dark. So brightness doesn't do anything when it's going negative. Okay, so we know we only need to be... Well, that's actually... We don't know that's true. Let's see what happens now. Oh, brightness does do something when it goes negative if contrast is high. Okay, so we're learning stuff every day. Um, and then we have to also switch the attributes on these. So very quickly, we'll make it a range of five, but we'll make the output minimum uh, negative two, point zero. And uh, with a range of five, that, that should work, and we'll do the same for the time being with this one. 2.0, the output minimum with a range of 5. And so, now we have uh, lots of controls to work on and adjust our picture. Very interesting. Much more interesting than I actually thought this tutorial was going to be. I hope you have discovered the same thing. So saturation, uh-oh, saturation is all over the place here. I did something wrong. Um, just <laughs> unlock our patcher, choose that one again. The range is five. Oh, the output minimum, I forgot to push negative two. Minus 2.0, that's what happened. Now I have to check the next one. Can't remember if I made it negative or not. Yes, I did. And this one, negative three. I'll make them all the same, just for the fun of it. Minus two, and 5.0. And uh, there we go. So, now supposedly when they're in the middle, they should be somewhere near normal. Of course they're not. Of course they're not. It's okay. There, there's normal now, somewhere in there. One ishness is zero. Very good. Well, you get the idea. That is how to modulate the Burkosa object and probably just about every other object that you will find in Jitter. You can just find the attributes that um, 
that are under the uh, inspector or also the reference will say at brightness, you know, at contrast, at saturation, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then you just you know that that's the word you have to use to prepend it to send a number in there. So that's it. That is the whole tutorial for today. How to modulate a basic effect. I thank you for watching, and I will see you the next time around.